Hi, my name is Shirley Hill, and I'm the wellness administrator for Saw Call Global Nation. I teach the chemistry of food and its relationship to disease. I would like to talk with you today concerning biblical nutrition. Did you know in 1970 that a trade industry organization reported to uh, researchers that every individual should only have 27 milligrams of artificial colorings per day? That was in 1970. But by 1977, every American was reportedly ingesting 327 milligrams of artificial colorings. That has nothing to do with the flavorings and the other chemicals, the enhancers, food enhancers, uh, and genetic alterings, all, nothing to do with that. By 77, 1977, that number had increased from 27 milligrams to 327. That is an increase, just in case you can't count, of 300%. So, when, we, when you go to your cabinet and you open your kitchen cabinet and you pull out your boxes of cereal, you know, those psychedelic colors with the psychedelic colors and the iridescent uh, gummy, chewy vitamins that you give to your children and the fruit boxes with all of the beautiful colors, red dye number 40 and blue dye number 20 and all of those things, how many chemicals are we actually giving our children and feeding ourselves? And what are the repercussions or uh, what are the hazards of the things that we are putting in our body? And why does it matter? You know, why does it matter that we're taking in all of these colorings and flavorings and additives? Let's go to the Word of God. In Genesis, the first chapter, about the 10th and 11th verse, and then down again, probably around the 27th verse, you will find a word that is repeated over and over again by God. And he says that every living thing, in these scriptures, that every living thing should reproduce after or bring forth after its own kind. Now, what does that mean? Well, the word kind there, uh, its definition is genus or species. So in the first chapter of Genesis, we see that God, God establishes a law that states that anything that has life, that it would reproduce after its own genetic nature or its own species. Food is living. What we put in our bodies, we put um, these uh, food stuff. I think that's a better term. The things that we put in our bodies today is, is, is um, it's living. It has a nature and it reproduces. But the question is, what is its life? What uh, life will it reproduce in our physical body? And will it facilitate uh, life as God gave us, will it maintain, will it enhance, will it repair, will it reveal, will it restore life to our physical body, or is it such that it will uh, decay, destroy, replenish, uh, not replenish, but decrease the life that we have? And we can see that question answered in the beginning also in the beginning of Genesis because it's the same dilemma that Eve had and Adam had when God told Adam, all of these trees you can eat from, they will reproduce life. These are the fruit, the fruit trees, they will give you life, the tree of life, it will give you life forever and so forth and so on. But the day that you eat from this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this tree, you will surely die because it reproduces death. Now remember that God had already established the law of kinds and the law of kinds said that every living thing reproduced after its genetic uh, nature or its own species. So then this particular tree, in order to reproduce death or cause them to die, it would have to have a death gene a death seed 
or reproduce death. 